Ezekiel chapter 20. It came to pass the seventh year in Babylon, the fifth month, and the tenth day of the month. Oh, look at that date. Can't get a date of Jesus' birthday. I got to say that around this time of year because people put more emphasis on something that's not biblical. If God wants us to know the date and time, he'll give it to us. The certain of the elders, all right, these are the people of authority, older people, we would call them senior citizens, of Israel came to inquire of the Lord. We want to know about the Lord. We want to know something from the Lord and sat before me, Ezekiel. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, find that particular expression of Ezekiel by God. You'll find it of Daniel and Jesus. Speak unto the elders of Israel. <laughs> there they are. Isn't it funny? The elders come to Ezekiel, and God speaks to Ezekiel, but not the elders. You know, at one point, Pilate tells Jesus what is true. <clears throat> And he sends them out to, to the crowd again. They say, crucify him, crucify him. And something about anybody who makes himself a king. And he comes back and he talks to Jesus. And he says, Jesus. And Jesus answers not a, not a word because hey, you don't want the truth. These elders are coming to, to Ezekiel. They don't want the truth. Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, there's that oath of God again. Say, say if the Lord God. I will not be inquired of you, uh, of by you. Will thou judge them, O son of man? <laughs> and they will probably say, judge not least he be judged before it was even written. Wilt thou judge them? Well, what we're going to read is judgment by God. God's going to judge them. And cause them to know the abomination of their fathers. Now, we talked about a couple chapters ago. You know, the fathers eating sour grapes and the children sit on, on sourness, bitterness of the but notice how often God goes back to historical facts. And we live in a day and age today that history is being rewritten, history is being erased in America. And in America, to say we're a Christian foundation, we're one nation under God, God doesn't change or erase history. And it's funny how Christians are saying, well, you know, uh, how bad these statues are being torn down. Didn't God tell Israel when they got into the land to get rid of the images, idols, and pictures and all that? Don't you see those statues of, of, those, of those men and women and all that? They're idolatry. Uh, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, and here we go. In the day when I chose Israel. Israel didn't choose God. God chose him. And lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob. And made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt. That would be through Moses. When I lifted up my hand unto them, I said, I am the Lord your God. That's what Moses told them. So Moses was truly the ambassador of God. Inspiration. And God's eliminated Moses because it's not Moses, it's God. You know, in the time of Jesus, there's, there's a remarkable statement made by Jesus at Moses' seat. Where do you ever find a Moses' seat? See, they valued Moses more than God. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt. 
into the land that I espied for them. Along with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. That's Israel. That's the promise God made them. A land. Then I said unto them, Cast away every man the abomination of their eyes. Defile not yourself with the idols of Egypt. Well, did they do that? Well, what was the golden calf that Aaron made? That was the Egyptian god. They even got to a point in the wilderness that, oh, let's go back to, to Egypt because we love the leeks, the onions, and all that. We, we, we value Egypt more than we value the land of God. I am the Lord your God. There's that I am. How important is that I am that it it it, it turns the leaf on the Jehovah Witnesses? Well, Jesus never said he was God. At one point, Jesus says, I am, and the Jews picked up stones to stone him, and we're gonna stone you because you make yourself equal with God, but Jesus never said he was God. Will you read your Bible? Will you read the Gospel of John? That I am is a particular expression of Jehovah. Learned by Moses. But, you're going to see a lot of buts in this chapter. They rebelled against me. And would not hearken unto me. And we know the whole wilderness journey. We're going to see God's going to keep on mentioning the wilderness journey. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes. They carried those gods with them into the promised land. And then they picked up the Canaanite gods. That's the Baptist church today. We are doing that today. When you read books about mystery Babylon, mystery, uh, mystery Babylon, mystery or Babylon, mystery Babylon, and the two Babylons, you realize that these gods have been carried over always since Tammuz and Nimrod, and they are alive and well today. And you think it's just a Catholic abomination whore? Well, so is his star, and so is Christmas. We're in that time of season, as I keep on mentioning. Aaron had the golden calf. America in the world today has the golden arches. I bet you more people in the world today will recognize the golden arches rather than recognizing the cross. If I were to show flashcards, and all right, here's a here's a flashcard of the golden arches, a hamburgers. Unless you're in India, they don't serve hamburgers there. And then I show a flashcard with a cross. Well, what's that? That's my phone. That's what that is. That, that, that that's another idol today. The phone. Neither did neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. You know what God did in Egypt? You know all those plagues? They were against the gods of the Egyptians. And when they came out of Egypt, they carried those gods with them. Then said then I said, I will pure I will pour out my fury upon them. Do you know, you know, we, we, we just celebrated Thanksgiving. Do you know we go back to the Puritans of, of Massachusetts and the pilgrims that came over to Mayflower and how great and wonderful the, the Mayflower is. And we're going to celebrate the time of Thanksgiving. Oh, glory to God in the Baptist church. Do you know they forbade the celebration of Christmas in America? It was illegal to celebrate Christmas. It was even illegal to have some of the foods that they had on Christmas in England. Some of them puddings and whatever those things were. You couldn't even have those.
And I said, I will pour my fury upon them. And that happened in the, in the wilderness. And that's happening all through the judges. And that's happened through all the time of the history. And it's happening at the end of Jeremiah. To accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Israel. Now these are God's people. These are the Jews. What do you think he's going to do with the Christian who are God's people? And then what do you think he's going to do with the heathen who are not his people? I told a woman today, Christmas is a sin. You need to repent. But I wrought, worked for my name's sake. And there were times that Moses would interfere and, and, and stand in the gap like Jesus. The mediator between Israel and Jehovah, because they, they, they would. They, there are some who said it, and rightly say it was so too. If Moses and Jehovah ever got angry with Israel together, that would have been it. Because they outright angered God. And what do you think the church does today? I'll tell you how much, how angry God is. He stands outside the church house knocking. I ain't going in there. You ever think about what Jesus in the gospel says he was in the temple. He was he was he was at the treasury and he taught the people in the temple. And yet the church age today, the Bible says Jesus won't even go in the church. But I'll accomplish my anger with them in the midst of the land of Egypt. I wrought for my name's sake, it should be it should not be polluted among the heathen. Well, Israel joined in with the heathen. Among whom they were. That's the Egyptian. In whose sight I made Myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. The Red Sea crossing. That is the only way power of God. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I want to show you something. Hebrews 11. I want to show you something. Look at this. Hebrews 11. And let me see if I'm here. Hebrews Moses. Alright. Hebrews 11. I don't know if I know that's over. All right, look at Hebrews 11, 29. And here, here's where we're at. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. We know that place, right? In which the Assyrians assassinated ass 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 to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Do you see something there? Hebrews 11, the great faith chapters, brings us from the Red Sea to Jericho. There is nothing recorded in Hebrews 11 of faith in the wilderness at all. Look at that. Between the Red Sea and Jericho was the wilderness, and we can't find nothing in the Hebrews. Great faith chapter. Ezekiel. He says, I lifted up my hands unto them in the wilderness, verse 15, that I would not bring them into the land which I have given them, along with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgment, walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbath, for their heart went after their idols.
And this is the times that God and Moses got together. I'm done with them. And Moses is like, oh, you know, if you do that, the Egyptians are going to sneak. Nevertheless, my eye spared them for destroying them uh, by Moses. God has removed Moses out of the picture saying, it's not Moses, it was me. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. He wanted to a couple times. But I said unto the children in the wilderness, walk ye not in the statue of your fathers. Neither observe their judgments nor defile yourselves with their idols. Well, it sounds, says something about Israel in the wilderness. I mean, Israel in, in Egypt. They were involved in the idolatry. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes. Keep my judgments. And do them. Hallow my Sabbath. Talking to Israel. They shall be a sign. Jews require a sign. Between me and you. Well look at that. Today there are Gentiles. You know we're, we meet on Saturday. Because that's the Sabbath. And, and, and Well the Sabbath is a sign. Jews require a sign. The Sabbath has nothing to do with the Christian or with Gentiles. Somebody's not reading their scriptures. And there was in the wilderness, there was a man on the, on the Sabbath that gathering sticks to have a fire. And they, they put him in ward, and God said, stone him. And there are Gentiles today, oh, we honor the Sabbath, yet they will turn the key in their car, the spark of fire, the spark plug, and go to church on Saturday on the Sabbath and violate the Sabbath rule. How about that? But there is no violation of the Sabbath, because the Sabbath is a sign Paul wrote that Jews require a sign. The sign is a Sabbath. Well, Sabbath is one of the signs. That's not ours. The sign between me, God, and you, Israel. That you may know that I am the Lord your God. Uh-oh, there is that. You shall know I am the Lord of God. The Jews were a called out remarkable people the Gentiles work seven days a week you the Jew are supposed to take at least one of those days off and the Jews had a hard time with that even in Ezra and Nehemiah's day and yet they went far-fetched in the time of Jesus oh you healed a man you broke the Sabbath you're rubbing corn in between your fingers that's breaking the Sabbath Notwithstanding, it's not a good word, the children rebelled against me, God, and walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if, a man, which if a man do, he shall live in them. And they polluted my Sabbath. Oh, air pollution, water pollution. We got to have a summit, global warming. We got to cut emissions. We got to stop having plastic bags. We got, and God says, What about polluting me? Oh, who cares about what God? Mother Nature, El Nemo. I, think, I find it quite remarkable since COVID-19. I find it quite remarkable when I go to a good, famous store and I go out in the parking lot. Now I find 
face mask all over the place as a pollution. The face mask will protect you from COVID-19 while you throw them on the ground. I don't know how long it takes face masks to, to dissolve. Not withdrew my, uh, and it says, not for saying children, walk not my statute, neither kept my statute, do them, which if a man do, he shall live in them. They polluted my Sabbath. I don't see that pollution. But that's the Jews. They kept the Sabbaths in Jesus' day, and yet the Son of God, God himself, crucify him and give us Barabbas. Really? Then I said, God, God said, I would pour out my fury upon them and accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. This is what Nehemiah was afraid of. They were selling wares on, on the side. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to do that again. Evidently, somewhere, he's, uh, uh, Nehemiah had been read, reading Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that again. God gets highly upset with the Jew for breaking his Sabbath. I can imagine the, 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 these covenant breakers today, they're probably, God is all angry because nobody's keeping his Sabbath. I will accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. So the wilderness history is to point to the Jews in the time of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. You remember what you remember what God did to you, your fathers in the wilderness? He gonna get you now. And he puts you in the land, you are in the land, and you're gonna come out of the land. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand, the long-suffering of God, and wrought for my name's sake. Not because you're Jews. Not because you're Moses. They came out by the power and by the name of Jehovah that it should not be polluted. God's name being polluted. How's that for a pollution? We're talking about air pollution. We're talking about smog pollution. We're talking about plastic bag pollution. How about God damn it pollution? How about the name of Jesus Christ in a vein pollution? I'm sitting in the gas station today. A guy got out of the car and the F bomb, his leg hurt. Well, what about that pollution? No, but if a man gets up and preaches Jesus, we got to shut him up. What about the pollution that the DJ was playing? How about the pollution of the DJ? Well, God bless us all. And, you know, just the piety and the piety and, and, the, and the hypocrisy. Well, we can talk God, too. We're better than he is over there. And he don't have people hokey pokey and doing the dancey wancy. After all, God must love us because lightning didn't strike him and lightning don't strike us. Well, God's not answering my prayer about striking your instruments. For my name's sake, that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen. That's a pollution. The name of God being blasphemy is a pollution. And I don't want to check something.
If you look at Romans chapter 2, verse 24, Paul says, look at this, For the name of God is blaspheming among the Gentiles through you, as is written, For the circumcision very prophet, very prophet, if thou keepest law, they're not keeping the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcised. The Gentiles are blaspheming God through you guys. You say we're keeping the law, yeah, but you're not doing it. He says, in the sight I brought them forth. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness. This is all the wilderness. Ezekiel, by God, is saying, will you look at your history? Go back to the law and read the wilderness. That I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through all the country. Then Moses stepped in. Because they had not executed my judgment. They're not doing that now. But despise my statutes. Jeremiah tells us that. And have polluted my Sabbath. And their eyes were after father's idols. You mean like the, the queen of heaven. I mean Esther. Father Christmas. Santa Claus. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. God says, I give you things that you just so to kill you off. And I pollu I polluted them in their own gifts. They reap what they're sold. They polluted God. God said, okay, here's your pollution back. That's a rule that the world's learning now. You're going to reap what you sow. I polluted them in their own gifts, okay? In that they caused their they caused to pass through the fire. All that opens the womb. The Bible says children are a gift of God. And if you're gonna put them in the fire of Molech, all right, I'll pollute you. In America, it is legal to have an abortion. You're going to reap. Well, you know, we had the great Donald Trump. Why didn't he stop it? Huh? If he was so great, why didn't he have an executive order banned of killing of babies? If he was so great. Why didn't he come up with the proclamation, Jesus Christ is the God of this nation? <laughs> Donald Trump? Really? He's his own God. God says the killing of children pollutes. I might make them desolate. Uh oh. You got a nation that don't have any babies, they don't have a nation no more. You got a nation of sodomites, males with males and females with females, they don't make babies. You don't have a nation no more. Where do you think America's going? Where we have legalized abortion and we legalized sodomy. We're going to end up with a nation with no children. No population.
And we did it because we legalized it. To the end, they might know, uh-oh, I am the Lord. <laughs> you're not going to have a population growth because you killed your children, and you're going to know it was me. And we'll stop right there.